Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Are you looking to travel to Canada and Alaska and have you wondered what happens if a bear comes along? Oh shoot, there's a hazard out there. Ah, oh, sweet. All right, we're safe. Well, there's a lot of things that are wrong with that clip. So I want to talk to you about my experiences of bringing a weapon to Canada and Alaska, uh, what you should and shouldn't do, and just kind of some general info that I could share with you to help. Also in today's video, I want to show you the Olight M2R flashlight that mounts easily onto a rifle. So first and foremost, um, like that clip I showed in the beginning, you're not allowed to bring a pistol through Canada at all. Uh, it has to be a rifle. This rifle sitting next to me, this AR-15, you're not allowed to bring that either. Um, you are allowed to bring a shotgun and I believe you know other types of rifles. Now I don't know the nitty gritty. Um, one thing that I really wanted to do was bring a shorter shotgun or you know one with the sawn off barrel but I didn't want to push the legalities of it so if I were you know going to build the perfect weapon for it it would probably be a 12 gauge with as short a barrel as I could um, with a light as well and you know some accessories why bring a weapon with you um, that could be obvious for some for others you might be like I don't get it why why do you need this weapon well um, to be honest, for me, it's all again, it's all about protecting myself against a potential wildlife threat. Going to Alaska um, with bears and moose and caribou and bison and all these big, big animals that can eat you if they want to was a little intimidating. And for me, growing up in the desert, I was definitely out of place. Everyone I talked to said, "If you don't have a weapon with you, you're an idiot." So, um, other than having the gun in a case. Um, locked up having the ammunition separate uh, from it you are allowed to bring ammunition across the border by the way they limit how many rounds you can carry uh, they were a little bit vague when I was asking them how much I don't think they wanted to tell me how much so uh, a box or two maybe three is fine I think anything within reason uh, so you are allowed to bring it you want to keep it separate you want to keep it locked up um, when I went through the border the first time I stopped at the US side and they inspected the rifle. Uh, that was very relaxed. Um, they acted like they do it all day long, no big deal. Took a quick peek at it, uh, wrote the serial number down, gave me a slip to hand to the Canadian border. Pulled up to the Canadian border, told them I had a rifle, they asked me some simple questions, asked me to come inside and pay a $25 permit fee. When I went inside to pay the permit fee, that's where things began to get a little bit deeper. Um, they want to know, obviously, where you're going with this gun, what your plans are with it, and specifically why. And for me, it was, I live out of my truck. I'm planning to be in areas where there's going to be a lot of wildlife, and I want to be able to protect myself if I have to. Thank God I never had to. I never fired this rifle off. Um, across the border in Alaska or anything like that. Um, now one thing, you are not under any circumstances allowed to have a loaded rifle in Canada, let alone shoot a rifle in Canada. Um, at least that's what they told me. You might be able to get some permits for that, but traveling through, not allowed to use it. Um, so that's something that is kind of weird you have to be you have to have totally different habits when you're in Canada versus when you're actually in Alaska in Alaska you can have it in the back you can you know have it ready to go um, so that was that was one thing to consider I think if I were to go back it would be really nice to have a light which is why I have this AR-15 sitting next to me this is not a rifle that you can bring to Canada by any means but I wanted to show you this really cool um, light that I got now that we're on the subject of rifles and things uh, from Olight so this is uh, super new super cool new light the M2R Warrior and this thing mounts right up here to with a pressure sensor um, so as you can see I can turn it on and off, I can hold it and get it off, I can click it and get it on and off. 
The reason I wanted to show you this is, first of all, I love Olight flashlights. But second of all, if I was to be bringing a shotgun or a rifle again to Canada, I'd want to make sure it had a light and a laser on it. So the M2R is an 1800 lumen flashlight um, with this really cool switch on the back here. So this will turn it on and off. Um, and then this is the pressure sensor switch that in all Olight's fashion magnetically just magically pops right on there. And then you hit this and that will turn the light on and as off. As much as a flashlight could be used as a defense tool, I think this one could. It's got some pretty aggressive uh, bezel here around the side. Um, and it's one LED, it's one spot, so it's perfect for the rifle. So check it out, Olight's having a sale on this light, the M2R, um, where you can get 30% off, but if you get the uh, pressure sensor switch and the little mount here with it as well, you get for 40% off. Instead of paying over 150 bucks, you get them for 90 bucks. It's quite the deal. Um, this is a sweet little flashlight. So I figured since we're on the gun topic, wanted to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Olight and that light. And you should go check that light out because it's super sweet. Um, I'll put a link below in the description. But yeah, back to the old uh, topic at hand here. So originally I came into Canada, into Calgary, uh, got this permit, and then came back through. Um, back down to Washington, and then I went back to, to Vancouver after Ashley and I had met up. I had an active permit going back through. It didn't seem to matter. They obviously want to fully know your intentions with it. Once they knew that I, my plans were to go to Alaska, they issued the permit. Now this is a, I believe it's a 60 day permit. Um, you pay $25 for. It seemed like you know, each and every border crossing. They didn't care what the person said before or if they get a permit or not. They wanted to do their due diligence, which I, you know, appreciate. So crossing into Vancouver, we had an active permit. We figured we might be able to, you know, just kind of go through, but they wanted to, us to come inside. So we parked the truck. They asked that we'd kennel the dogs, which I thought was a little weird and said, okay, maybe they're gonna search the vehicle now. So we kenneled the dogs and then they ended up wanting to just take a peek at the rifle in the truck. It was a little bit weird though. We had to, you know, kennel the dogs, like I said, and stay away from the truck for a little while. I would say if you do plan on bringing a rifle through, expect this to be a regular course of action. Please pull off to the side, come on in, and if anything, just expect to get searched every time you go through. Um, I don't even think they did search the whole vehicle. They just wanted to look at the rifle. And everywhere after that, um, you know, they didn't even take a look inside the vehicle at all. Uh, coming back into the United States from Canada, uh, there was they never even asked if we had a rifle or there wasn't any any issues there. More likely that going into Canada is where you're going to have to chat about this a little bit more. Now, let's talk about how I felt about this beforehand versus doing it. Um, so when I looked into it, I saw this is a legal thing to do. Um, you know, you fill out a form, you pay a fee. Oh, good, easy. Well, it is, but it's also not something that everybody does. So expect to be kind of grilled and, and kind of uh, interrogated in a sense of why are you bringing, you know, why are you bringing this through? Not everyone needs this. Um, that's one thing that I didn't really expect, especially being a dual citizen. I'm a Canadian and a U.S. citizen. Um, but so that was a little bit different. Uh, it was very cheap though, uh, you know, to bring it through. I had to pay the fee twice since we were there, you know, longer than 60 days. So it cost $50 total. Never did end up firing off, um, the rifle. So yeah, that's kind of my opinions on it. Um, I hope that this video, you know, helped give you some insight. If you have any questions, comments, I'm sure there's things I didn't talk about that I wanted to or should have or something like that. Um, we hadn't an fantastic time traveling through Canada. Um, the Alaska Highway went all the way up to the Dempster Highway up to Tuk -tuk -tuk -tuk, and uh, the top of the world highway into Alaska. Um, had an amazing time exploring glaciers in Alaska driving the Cassiar or sorry the um, Denali Highway and uh, and the Seward Highway and checking out the Kenai Peninsula. It's a beautiful world out there. Stay protected. Um, stay within your laws, know what you can and can't do, 
and uh, this is not a typical video for me but I learned some things and I wanted to pass them along to you so I hope you liked it be sure to comment let me know what you think always subscribe check out my rig walk arounds I got tons of overland content and cool videos the question is are you down to mob you <laughs>